Okay, guys, good morning to all of you. Can you hear me loud and clear? If yes, give me a thumbs up or L and C, please. Okay, thank you, Louis. Morning to you, Jason. All right, guys, today the session is incredible. I can guarantee you this after today. After today, all right, you will really, really see market in a very different way. So, so today, there's a lot, a lot of information to be shared with you, right? A lot, guys. So don't hesitate to bring your friends in right now to watch this MAO. There's so much information for today. All right, I will be covering a lot on what's happening now in Russia. And I believe that right, there could be something big that's gonna happen over the next few days or weeks, all right? This is gonna be really crazy stuff. All right, morning to you, Kevin. Morning to you, Peter. Hey, Chong Ming, good to see you, Daniel. All right, good morning to all of you. Today is going to be impactful. All right, so quickly now, like and share with all your friends. Let them come in and let them enjoy this MAO. Now, most likely, it's all right. Um, we may not have MAO this after today because uh, after today, this week, uh, because I'll be preparing for the event. So maybe the next MAO itself will be next week. So that's why today I'll try to cover as much as possible. So try to take down notes, okay? There's a lot of information to be shared with you, okay? So quickly do it right now. Let's start our morning MAO right now. Okay, let's go. Okay, all right. Today is the 21st of April, 2022, Thursday. All right, we are just three days away from the big event, yes. On the 24th of April, we have a TWB big event. Now, this event itself is definitely going to be big because not only that the budget involved is pretty high, more important is that, right, the sponsors are really kind. They are really kind and they understand the situation and they really go up. In fact, it's all right. They have decided to give another big prize itself, which I shared with you yesterday, another big prize worth $2,200, okay, to the very, very lucky winner. But of course, you would need to be physically there to, to get the price, okay? So this gift is fantastic. It's really, really good. Especially if you're a trader, it's all right. This gift is going to be excellent, okay? All right, so for those who uh, want to join this event, but you couldn't make it because of, uh, you know, you were late in the registration, then I'm so sorry that way for the replay, all right? Now, replay, when would it happen? Probably take about one week to two weeks later. I'm not too sure on this, depending on the, on the video crew, all right? Now, for those who are coming, all right, don't be late because we will start sharp and there will be so much thing to be given. So you don't want to miss this. Now, we have already um, uh, keyed in all the data. So very likely by later in the afternoon, we will open a TWB 24th April channel Telegram, and that is whereby we will share with you the information that you need to take note for the day. Now, if you want to win bigger prize, you want to big, big, win some prize, all right, you just have to bring a handphone with you. Your handphone is going to be a very important too. Okay, all right. So this is the thing here itself. So quickly, um, you know, for those people who are uh, who is or coming as all right, make sure that when you do not receive anything from us by tomorrow, by tomorrow you don't see any messages from Telegram. That means that we'll probably miss you out or your number ha happened to be uh, not, you know, registered with us. Uh, yeah, so this one, take note of that. Okay. All right. So with this, is all right. Today, you can see that today, my background, we have Netflix. Oh, my God. Netflix down by more than 30% in a single day. This is crazy because I was sharing with you on Monday and Tuesday. I was saying very, very, very clearly that be careful on this uh, Netflix, I said that Netflix itself, likely the data will not be good. And truth be told, the data was pretty uh, stunning. I'll put it this way. I'll cover this later. Then, of course, Tesla. Not bad at all. The result have been pretty good. And it looks like there is further upside for Tesla in the coming months. Not now, coming months. I'll talk about this also later. And crude oil prices have been very interesting. I've been hovering at $100 for a long time. 
All right. The question is this, how come is it doing that? Wait, all right. Not for that also. And last but not least, regarding about the Russia Ukraine thingy. All right. Today is impactful stuff, guys. Morning to you, Nelson. Good morning to you, guys. Morning to you, Leslie. Let's start today. MAO. Brace yourself. Donbass will be the final battleground. All right. Now, let me ask everybody here now. There are 39 of you right now at this very moment. It's absolutely fine. Now, if I would ask you this question, I want you to give me the answer immediately. Okay. Who do you think will win? in this battle? Do you think Ukraine will win or Russia will win? All right, come on, give me your answer right now. Key your answer right now. Let me just feel from you guys. Who do you think will emerge the, the winner from this unfortunate event? All right, please key your answer right now. Ukraine or Russia? Okay, let me wait for you. All right, straight away, I can see Chong Ming saying Russia. Okay, interesting. Uh, Louis also say Russia. Okay. Anthony, Russia. Okay. Fico, also Russia. Ah, okay. Okay. All right, Peter, also Russia. Nelson, also Russia. Oh my God, you guys are all Russian fans. Okay. Oh my God, Leslie also say Russia. Oh, Kareen, you also say Russia. Oh my God, okay. All right, wow. Aren't you reading the news? Don't you know that it's the Ukraines are winning the battle? Don't you know that the numbers are showing that the Ukraines are winning? Why do you choose Russia, guys? I mean, the mainstream media is covering day nonstop that Russia is losing. Ukraine is winning. And Ukraine got so many armory coming in. What made you think that Russia will win? That's very interesting. Ah, okay. I can see that uh, there's one different now. Jason says uh, Ukraine. Cool. Uh, oh, Richard also say Russia. <laughs> Chongming and the oil will also win. Oh, okay, You're, I'm with you on this. <laughs> uh, Claudia say is Ukraine. Okay. NATO running out of arms. Serious? <laughs> you think so? Okay. All right. So I want to see your, your reason, guys. Provide your reason for your stand. All right. I want to see what's going on here. So now, FYI, for those just joining us now, do not, today's MEO is two hours long. Yes, I'm not kidding you. Now it's 11 a.m., right? It will stretch under 1 p.m. It's because there's so much information shared with you today, okay? There's so much information. So you need to stay with me, all right? Mainstream media news is pro-Western. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, I will share with you my view later. Let's take a look. But meanwhile, it's all right. Disclaimer of light as usual. Thank you for your contribution. All right, please understand this is all right. Whatever I share later today is basically my own personal opinion, my very own personal opinion, yeah? You have to do your own research and groundwork and risk management before engaging the fire, okay? All right, this is very, very important. Yeah, thank you. Now, this is a joke of the day for today. Look at it. This is Uncle Sam whacking the economy. <laughs> okay, now we know this piñata. The thing is, this is supposed to be like a kid and now the sweets will come out, right? Now, the bull... And the bear is just looking at the piano. Why? Because it's just thinking who will win, correct or not? Now, the bulls and bears recently have been telling me, yes, I'm not kidding you, the bulls and bears talking to me, yeah? Because the bull trader say, how come Cal, the market is not going up that fast? The bear trader actually says that, right, how come the market is not going down at all? The market has been in a stagnancy for quite a while, right? Do you notice that? The market has been sideways, don't you notice that? So, the thing is this, why is that so? Is that right? Mm, that's a very good question. So I got some answer for you. Okay, let's take a look at my little sharing here. This is one internet clip that I took from, uh, I think that was from this uh, Steve Henrich. All right, let's take a read. Federal on inflation 2020 to 2022. Okay, we need to start a controlled fire. Okay, the fire will be transitory. Okay, oops, the fire is getting widespread. We may need to use water at some time, at some point, sorry. Wow, that's a big fire. Let's try one bucket of water. Maybe we may use two buckets or three. <laughs> we haven't decided yet. I think this really summarizes the entire thing now. That's why the bull and the bears are really lost. If you like this, sir, right, this little sharing and you feel that it summarizes everything, put the word like that, L-I-K-E, all right? All right, yes, indeed. Louis says that mainstream media has no access to MAO. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think if I were to do that, right, I think you know, it would fail. Right? <laughs> but the thing is just today's topic is wonderful, really. When I was doing this out, I feel that like the goal was there. So, <laughs> okay. All right. So indeed, right, this is what actually is happening right now. The Wayfair Reserve is actually handling the current situation. Really, it's well summarized by this entire, uh, this entire paragraph. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you for Louis and Anthony putting the word like over there. Thank you. All right, so you can see this is what's happening. Okay, guys, this is something very important. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, first of all, oh, you can see right now, you see that I think there are people who uh, there, I think there are people that still think the federal is serious about fighting inflation. Okay, so the red one is a CPI, CPI is a consumer price index. Okay. The blue one is the federal fund effective rate. I mean, the interest rate. Like, yeah? Okay, the thing is this. If you not take notice, if you actually notice this, yeah? Okay, when the, um, in the, the CPI data is going upwards, right? You notice that that is also the point whereby the Federal Reserve will also increase interest rate. So that's, that's, that's right, that's right, yeah? Okay, so you can see that as well, right? So you can see that when the CPI data is increasing, the Federal Reserve also increased the interest rate back then. So it's pretty, pretty clear. So the question is this, the question is this, how come now the CPI data is going through the roof, the Federal Reserve only do so little? So that's a big question mark here, right? Okay, oh, thank you, Louis, yay! Hang Seng trigger, profit, yay, well done. Okay, so we can go for him some later. <laughs> okay, so now the thing is this, the question is this, okay? Why? Mm. If you look carefully, in back in this 2009, the CPI data actually, okay, I just changed color, being it easier to infer, yeah? The CPI data actually also showed up. You notice that? The CPI data also showed up in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2022, 2011, remember that? Or because after the Lehman crisis. And then what happened was that they kept the interest rate very low. So you see, probably they may feel that, right, it happened before, maybe it will happen again. Because after that itself, you know, this, this, they kept the interest rate still low, but the CPI data come down on its own. Mm. So maybe itself, right, that could be the only reason why they are still hoping that this will be the same. But with the CPI data flying so high right now, I'm kind of thinking that, right, someone is wrong. And one more thing is this, if you look carefully in the, this drawing itself, you will notice that most of the time, the Fed fund rates and the CPI data will actually be, you know, linked together or they move together, right? So that means that if we are talking about now the CPI data at 8.0, are we saying that the interest rate must go to 8? Or well, I tell you itself, if the interest rate will go to 8, we'll go back all the way whereby in back in this 1987, and of course that was where the stock market crashed, <laughs> okay? That was back the, when 1987, whereby the interest rate went up so high that the stock market crashed. So do you think that this will happen? Right, do you think this will happen as well? I know that this was never the intention by uh, Steve Henry when he was doing this, but I just feel that, right, I must, when I see this as well, right, I just see the pattern there. Do you see the pattern? All right, do, for people who see the pattern, do you see the pattern, okay? All right, if you say, you, see, you can see my, the pattern here itself, right? Put the word yes. If you can't, just put it no. I want to see how many of you can see the pattern that I just drawn over here. With regards with the, how the, uh, you know, the, how, how the CPI goes up and the Fed fund rates come behind it. And then after that itself, right? You see the pattern whereby previously it's all right when the, if you say the, the CPI data and the Fed fund supposed to go in together since 1985 until now, then how come now it's so far away? So is it telling me that, right, the Fed fund rate must go all the way up just to meet the CPI data, or are they just going to just take fake ignorance in it and just there you go, and just hope and pray for the best? All right, so I can see that only 2% replied, Louis replied, Nelson replied. How about the rest? Do you all see this pattern? Or do you think that, right, it could actually happen in 1987? <laughs> all right, so of course, this is a joke of the day. I hope that it doesn't happen. But who knows, right? You never know, right? Jason also coming in. Okay. Ah, Kareen says that the CPI data should come down. That is correct, yeah? A lot of people now are banking that the CPI data will come down. 
their banking at the CPI data will come down. Hmm, that's a very good one. But the question is this, how can we make the CPI data come down? Now, I'm going to show you, let me show you something important, yeah? The CPI data, when it was at the low end to the high end, right? Until here itself, it took about almost two years for the CPI data to really come down. Two years. So now we are just less than, less than, uh, less than two years or so, right? We are already at the moon level. So I don't know how on earth can the CPI data come down with the current supply chain issue itself. That is why Tesla is actually having a little bit concern. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Karim, for that uh, different view. Right? Excellent. Okay. Let's continue. All right. So the thing is this. This is where it gets very irony, right? Look at this. On 19th of April, Federal Reserve, uh, Federal Reserve uh, official Bola, inflation is far too high for comfort. Federal has a good plan in place. Okay, they have a plan. All right, and they're saying that the far is too far for is too too far too high for for comfort, right? But the the, thing, the thing, interesting thing is his colleague, right, doesn't feel that way. In fact, it's all right. Federal Evans says I don't see the need for bigger than half point rate hikes. All right, comfortable with the rate hike plan path this year. That include two fifty basis point and get rate to about two point two five to two point five by year end. So you can see that, right, it's all right, different people, different views. Even though they are Fed officials, they have different views. Due to the COVID thingy, economic shutdown, the base is very low. Now the base is climbing. I agree. I totally agree with you, Karine. The base is climbing up. So the question is this, if the base is climbing up itself, but the material itself is not able to uh, come in fast enough, right, would that be a problem? And if that's going to be a problem itself, would that cause price to go up thick first before coming down? I'm actually on review on this itself. I believe that the base itself will come in. When more people come in, the supply itself will actually increase and that will bring down the CPI data. But the question is that before that happens, is that while people are going back to the economy, if the supply is actually low, would that cause us a spike up in the CPI data first? You understand my point? Give an example. Let's say now, because less of people involved in the market, right? Let's say people are all like COVID and stuff like that. So maybe this thing costs maybe like say $5. Now, then now all of us say, okay, let's go back to work. So all of us go back to work. But because of the still, the supply is still limited, right? Before the production can kick in. So what will likely happen is that the demand for the same thing might really shoot up. And then that is my point here as well. So I strongly believe that there could be one spike up movement before the thing comes down. So I believe that that's what Federal Reserve also think that way. So that's why they doesn't want to take the risk of actually um, hiking the interest rate too early. If they do it too fast and too early, right, it may overkill the market. So that's why today there's a lot of information to share with you. All right. Now, before that itself, right, let me... The spike is what we see now. Uh, mm, not really, no. I think there's more to go because you can see that um, more still a lot of people are still not back at work as you can realize that as well, right? To initially like Singapore just came back. But again, I will take that mark. All right, now to just flatter myself a little bit, right? Remember, I said this on the 19th of April, right? 19th of April, I, I share with you guys, I said that Netflix will be down. Remember, I said that Netflix will be down, all right? So of course, um, you can see that, okay, it's over here. Okay, Netflix will be down. And I said that, Traders to be very careful. You want to buy on Netflix, right? Try to buy after the date, after the news, yeah? So, of course, did the Netflix shares go down? I think pretty clear. It really went down quite a fair bit. Netflix yesterday closed down 35%. My goodness. Wiping off $50 billion of market cap. Oh, my God. All right. So, for those who remember that, it's all right. Can you cook here spot on for me? Spot on Netflix. Okay, like, come, if you can do that for me, do me a favor. Oh, chomming very fast. <laughs> all right, those who remember that I told you Netflix, all right, to avoid it, because I believe that they'll be selling. All right, do me a favor, just keyword, spot on Netflix itself. Yes, $50 billion just gone like that, just like that. <laughs> okay, all right. So the question is, of course, people ask me, Kel, how do you know the Netflix will be that? I mean, it was quite simple because you must understand that, right? We are going back to work. Like what Karin just said, we are going back to work. So lesser people get involved watching Netflix. And with all the all the nightlife coming back, it's how everybody be partying nonstop, right? All the karaoke's and drinking pubs. So it makes sense, right? So yes, indeed, I agree with Karin earlier, earlier is how the base is going back to work. So the Netflix, right, and all those pandemic stocks, right, will come down. They have their glory days, but now it's then to give back in a way. 
And that was one. And of course, the mega one was, I mean, Russia. They already took people, I mean, although Russia just only one, one customer base, but the market was leverage, leverage on it. And true be told, result, it did. So indeed, it's not right. And the best, best part is this. The main reason why the stock price came down so badly was because that, um, was because that they were looking at, uh, in, and the analysts were looking at increment of this uh, subscriber and increment. But the thing is that it came out below in negative right, a reduction instead. So that's where the market just break down. But of course, if you look at how the shares coming down, it's all right, it's actually pretty clear. The insiders must have no way. That's why the share price have been coming down all the way. Really no, no brainer on this as well, right? Let me share you more with some charts, yeah? So Netflix really <laughs> slapped Bill Eyman really hard, right? Bill Eyman, remember? Bill Eyman was the guy who came in to buy into Netflix recently, right? And I was saying this right in MAO. I said that he will get hit. Although that he's a billionaire, he has resources, he's much richer than me by many, many zeros, and he's definitely there, all right? But I felt that he was wrong. So I said this very openly. I said, I think that Bill Eichmann will be wrong. And uh, I think that uh, it happened, <laughs> okay? All right. So, mm, okay. So thank you for that. So, so that's why the reason why you probably need to really come down and listen to us on the 24th of April. Right, once again, again, guys, we have a full event and ready trading has closed. Now, I know some of you actually been asking, can we come in? Can you come in and get crashed? I'm so sorry. Yeah. On that day itself, you can't get crashed because the, the seat itself is really limited. We cannot push further. We did ask the hotel, can we like increase another 20 more seats? They said, no way, Cal, cannot. It's really full. 160 is a maximum. So dear all, I'm so sorry. We can't bring you in, really. And I know that I think easily got 10 people text me on the site already asking whether they can come in. I say, cannot, really full. I'm so sorry. Okay, Chomming, will there be more downside for Netflix, right? If you ask me itself, my answer will be yes. Yeah, I think that Netflix has chance to go down to $200. Yes, indeed. This is my personal view. Like, I'll talk about this very shortly. Okay, let's take a look. All right, now before that is all right, we go and do something else first. Like tonight, we have the initial jobless claims. All right, the numbers are looking about the same figure. So let's see how it goes. But you must understand the number did actually slightly increase. Huh? All right, the last time is all right, when this happened, okay, the number actually increased. Can you see that? The number increased from 166 to 185,000. So, mm, okay, not a very good sign. Claudia, maybe can record for 24th of April. Yeah, it will be recorded. It will be recorded. So when we replay, it's all right. Maybe at a later stage, yeah? Not immediately, okay? All right, so that is initial jobless claim. To take note of that. So guys, at 8.30 Singapore time, watch out for this. Then, of course, at 11 a.m., 11 p.m., sorry, 11 p.m., Jerome Powell will be speaking. All right, Jerome Powell will be speaking. All right, then after that, it's all right. Okay, he will be speaking again. Okay, all right, seemingly again. This, is, this timing is not a Singapore timing, right? So I assume it's again. So one at 11 a.m., one at 1 a.m.? Hmm, okay. Anyway, Jerome Powell speaks, we know, lah, usually things may happen. So traders, again, you need to be on standby if you think it's necessary, okay? All right. There we go. All right. So, but again, yesterday the Dow was pretty cool. Then the Dow immediately shoot up first on good day earnings. Then after that, there was some profit taking very fast. But then it went back up again very, very, very fast. Okay. So anyway, you stay there for quite a while. Then after that, there was some profit taking. Okay. A quick one. But the buying resumed pretty quick, very fast to the back. So it seems like the market just relentlessly relentless. So that's why the bulls are feeling the goodness of it. Because they say, hey, Cal, cannot go down. You see, it's so strong. Right, then the bear was saying, hey, Cal, how come uh, we shot already, right? We do think, if we don't take profit itself, the market goes back up. That's why I say the market is pretty tight. It's ranging towards the upside, which I've been sharing with you guys. All right, but the thing is, is just be careful, all right? I'll share you more in details in a short while, okay? So let's look at the, what the news correspondent says. Now, the Dow jumps 249 points, but Nasdaq is dragged down by a big plunge in Netflix. All right, let's take a look. So it was a divided, divided market, as you can see, as traders evaluate a stretch of first quarter result. So of course, we all know that right, Netflix down by 35% after its quarterly results show a loss of 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter. Now, this is the first reported subscriber loss in 10 years. This is the first, first problem, yeah? 
Second thing is, uh, right, this company now, okay, they may have even more losses of subscriber in near term. There may be more, according to that, what they're saying. That's why they're actually giving the heads up here. So you can see how Netflix shares open, then it went down to 260. Then after that, right, it plunged all the way down to 220, all right, and stayed around 220 for quite a while. And I think that, right, there is a very good chance we may see 200 in the near term. All right, 200 in the near term. I'll explain more in detail why, but you can see it right now. With that, right, all the same type of streaming company like Net, Disney, Roku, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Paramount all lost between 5.6% to 8.6%. So again, all these are the company that did very well during pandemic time. Now we have a problem, okay? Now, the luckily and fortunately, Procter & Gamble came in 2.7% and hold the market. And of course, IBM, I did say that IBM will be doing well. IBM is up by 7.1% because of the better earnings and revenue, right? So overall, it's now 12% of companies have reported and 80% has beat analyst report and uh, expectation, yeah? Okay, but the question is this, the market stupid reaction is now right. It's actually a question mark. Yes, it's neither here or there. So that's why now all eyes will be watching and the yields, which is what we'll be looking at that now, it hit 2.94% yesterday. I'm just 0.06% 0 .06 away from my target. I've been saying this, it will hit 3% and it will. So you can see right now, this is the long-term chart of the uh, yield, as you can see right over here. I'm gonna move the chart a little bit higher. Okay, so you can see right now, this is actually done in 2019. Okay, 2019, and the thing is, it went down all the way because of the uh, bonds buying. All right, then after that, it bottomed out. Okay, and then the bonds start to sell. And if you look at it clearly, it's not right. It has went all the way up through the Fibonacci, and now it's went beyond the 78.6, which is 2.62%. Now, still quite a bit of people are looking at it go down. I don't think so. I believe that it will go to the 3% mark very soon. Okay? So, my point is this, because I feel that the US economy is all right. It's still not at the point that they will buy a lot of bonds yet at this very moment right now. Though the yield now is very good, but I think only at the 3% mark that we may see the market say, you know what, let's dump some stocks away and buy into the bonds. Because by the time the bonds will be a very cheap price and the yield is still at 3%, okay, then that will be a good time to buy. So that's why I'm going to write it down for you guys. Yeah? So now the thing is this, the bond prices is down because the yield is up, right? So the stock market now is up and down, uh, neither here or there. So my belief is this, Right, the buy the bonds itself, right, will climb up soon because it's cheap, and that will drive the yield down. And when that actually happened, the stock market was when they start to buy the bond, right, they will sell the stocks, and that is where stocks price will come down. So this is what I see in the next few months. All right, let's see whether I'm right. Huh? I say this upfront first. Today is the twenty first of April. We are doing this right now. I believe that right, this will likely be happening. So for you guys who are online right now, do you think that this will happen? That means that people will actually sell stocks away and take the money to buy into bonds at 3% coupon rate. All right, if you think that you agree with this, key the word agree. If you say that I disagree, all right, can you share with me why you disagree? Let me know. All right, there are 65 of you now. Let us me see your take, okay? Let me see, yeah? Okay, waiting for your answer. I get some water.
Okay, well, I have a few agree here with Elvis, agree, Jason, agree, Nelson, Susan, Louis, uh, Jerry, Anthony. Wow, you guys all agree. Okay, hmm, let's see whether does this, will this happen, yeah? Okay, so now let's take a look right now over here. You can see very clearly yesterday our Dow Jones do us a great favor, right? The Dow Jones was a CCRY on the day chart. You can see very clear, and I stated that to you yesterday. Now, the KSI was red, so I did say that there could be some selling, all right, because it's KSI red and some tick. But, of course, we have to follow the chart. So, once the market, right, stays and goes beyond MA200, that means that MA200 is the first and last resistance. So, when you broke resistance at 34,924, we know that it will be heading towards this figure. This figure itself is 35,240. Now, this is the BMB, BMB, right, one time one. So, which means that, right, when the market actually stays above this area here, we know that all the TWB students, all right, is looking at this, uh, what do you call, uh, 35,240, all right. So if you actually follow the queue, you have actually set to sell it here. And that is pretty good because this from the opening price to the target is about 300 points. That's a very good profit, right? For those who made profit, congratulations to you. Our site also make money, yep. Yeah? Okay, Karina just said, I thought Fed mentioned 2.5% by 2022. Yeah, they did say that, that's all. Yeah, they did say that. Yeah, that's why the thing is it's going to 3%. And market is pricing in beyond that, that's all. Yep. Yeah? Okay, all right. Okay, so that was what happened. Now, let's take a look at the intraday momentum. Now, the intraday momentum, you can see multiple green dots over here itself. So the market did come down instead. Then it was ding-donging quite a fair bit throughout the, in the morning. Yeah? Then the real movement came in because, the, again, you can see green dots appearing. So same thing, it's either a big upside or a big downside. But what is important is, can you see a bomb is there? Yay, you see a bomb, right? And the best part is this, you, you take notice of this, the market actually stopped nicely at this point, and that indicates the market might be bottoming. And of course, with the KSI jump, that gave us the uptick call. So that's where the market went all the way up itself, and that was where it triggered the PMB one time one beautifully. And then at that very moment, if the price came down, really crazy. So this is how our system works. So for those people who follow through and bought with us, congratulations to you once again. All right, good job. Now for gold, it was a little bit tough to trade on gold. Now the KSI was green. The, there's uptick on that side. There's no blue bars at the bottom. So it's very bullish, okay? It's very bullish, okay? So if it's bullish itself, right, the market should be up, true. So what happened? The market came down first. It went down, triggered the MA30. It's 1946. The low was 1939. So we thought the market would go down further, right? But because the KSI is green and it's uptick, so it's kind of tough to avoid it go down. So once the market recovers, we know that it's a buy. And of course, if the market goes back above the MA30, it's a confirmed buy. And if it goes above the pivot one, even better, because that will be above OP, above pivot one. It's a classic buy. So these are the reasons for us to call for buy yesterday. So let's see what happened intraday first. Now intraday, the price came down. You can see very nicely the green, all the green dots are telling you there'll be big movement coming down or up. But what is crazy was this guy. Look at the bomb here itself. Now I did say before, guys, many, many times, when the market is uptrend, look out for bombs, okay? They will work wonderful. When the market is downtrend, downtrend, look out for stars. Now, you notice that when the market is actually an uptrend market, uh, uptrend draw for you, uh, when the market is uptrend, right, you notice the bomb itself is excellent. The bomb itself, the accuracy is ridiculously good. Same thing, when the market is downtrend, the stars are impressive, all right? Okay, so my point is this. If you look at the bomb right now and you draw the two line where you're supposed to do that, you will see very nicely this was the reason why the market just couldn't go down. So now you see why the price goes up. Ah, excellent. Now, of course, the star will have its mark over there. So the star is there, put the two lines in and you can see why the market came off after that, okay? So, but again, because of the MA is there, 
and the KCB is also there, very strong. The market just couldn't go below it. It did tap below, but it didn't close below. And this is a very bullish sign. And that's the reason why you can see that the gold went back up again. So now you understand why we are still long in gold, despite all the things being said, but we just believe in our system and we are now still making money on gold. Yeah. Okay. Um, stars not. Oh, star not. Okay. Does your view on buying US share in May still valid? Now, I already said this uh, before. Now, we are supposed to have some selling, all right, in March to April, but it didn't really materialize. So it seems that the Federal Reserve is kicking the can down a bit more. So if you want to ask me based on what I share back then, I would say this, from now, which is 21st of April till May, early to May itself, right? If the market continue to go higher, right? I believe that this will stretch a little bit more to about mid of May, maybe 10 to 15 of May, then you must be very, very careful. That is whereby the market may actually come off. All right, that's how I personally feel it. Now, of course, if the market do the other way around, if the market actually comes off first from, let's say, today till end of the month of April, right, then maybe it will be a buy opportunity in May. So now at this stage here itself, I will say no buying. I will say no buying. Wait for a while. Uh, let's observe this and see whether is the market going to go upwards towards the mid of May. Now, if the market starts to sell off, which I think might likely may happen, then, of course, mid of May will be a better time to buy. So you heard me now? All right, hopefully I can. It's good enough. I can share with more details uh, later on uh, where we have all the other external stuff being shared for today. Yeah. Okay, hope I answer you. Okay, so now we're going to go into a lot of news and stuff. So you need to stay with me, all right? A lot of news today. Now, Russia and Ukraine battle for Donbass could decide the war. That's the reason why I'm saying this. And it could go either way. Mm, interesting. Even though the Western are saying that the, the Ukrainians are winning, but now apparently the way they say it, this doesn't give me the feel that they will win in a way. So the Russian war with Ukraine entered a new phase this week with Moscow focusing the war machine on eastern Ukraine. All right. So now the thing is, at the same time, Russia is going very offensive also, and they really want to win this. Okay. They really want to win this. So you can see now, thanks to the pro-Russian troops are driving across the Ukraine-Russia conflict in Ukraine. This is the troops. All right, you can see the word Z down there as well. As long as you see the Z that belongs to the Russia side or the Ukraine side. <laughs> okay. All right. Then, of course, you can see that, unfortunately, we have many Ukrainian civil, uh, civilian and soldiers who lost their lives throughout this battle. You see the numbers are really, really heavy. All right. And this is really why... Going for war is all right. Doesn't really, really make anybody a winner, honestly. All right. Okay, so now this is from the Western side, the Western news. That's where something a little bit interesting. Okay, come. All right, so now it says that, right, the Russian road soldiers, the morale is very low. Oh, okay. The question is, how do they know? Okay. And the thing is this, Russian forces could wear down Ukrainian position through heavy concentration of firepower and sheer weight of the numbers. But of course, this will come at a high cost and a sudden dramatic offensive uh, success remain highly unlikely. <laughs> okay, so it's just telling you, it's uh, okay, the Russian is bigger, they have more firing power, but they may not win. Uh, okay, so because their morale is low. Mm, okay, fine. All right, so this is again, you can see from the angle of the Western side. Yeah? Okay, let's look at from the, the other side. Okay, so now you can see this, okay, that now this is day 50. I guess this today is day 50 already, FYI. Yeah? Right, the Moscow was hit hard and the Ukrainian side confirmed its surrender. Okay, this one is basically someone people say, right? so don't get into it. Huh? All these are all the grab vines. Huh? Now, apparently, hundreds of thousands of troops assembled at Wutong. Hmm, I didn't know that it's a Wutong, actually. All right. And is Zelensky ready to die for the country? And China sends strong signal. Now, all these is stuff, right, or propaganda, yeah? So you need to go slow with this. Okay, anyway, uh, I think there's some PowerPoint. You should have just clear up this first. Mona. Okay, so what happened is this, okay? They, there's this article being mentioned. Say that, right, the biggest battle between Russia and Ukraine is about to break out. Okay, so Zelensky told public in a recent interview with the media that Russia had causes huge losses to Ukrainian people and they call Russian military activity genocide. Okay, fair enough. All right, he has hatred for what the Russian has done. Okay, I mean, seriously, anyone will, all right? 
But the thing is this, but we must understand that now Russia and Ukraine are gathering troops to prepare for the biggest battle. Now it's reported that total 100,000 of troops have gathered in the East Ukraine, and this is going to go big. So at the same time, it's all right, China is being asked which side are they standing? And of course, China's side still maintain that, right, they maintain peace talks and they want it to be settled amicably. So Zhao Li Tian, all right, the, I think was the foreign minister, all right, says that, right, we want the conflict to end as soon as possible. So, and the Chinese government has never bowed down to its, uh, to, you know, to the Western side itself. So now this could be interesting at the same time, because if this battle could be a big one, and then I think that US will take this opportunity and ask the Chinese, which side are you on? And of course, if you choose some side that they are not happy with, then most likely things may actually go at a mixed level. All right, now I understand why itself, I'm getting a bit concerned right now. So why is this going to be a biggest battle? So apparently, apparently, right, it seems that Putin did ever say that he won a victory day. Now, victory day is to him itself is the 9th of May. 9th of May is a victory day. So we covered this before, all right? Now we'll go this again. But what is cr incredible is this. Yesterday, right, yesterday, apparently, again, I say that these are the things that they came from the Chinese uh, talk shows so from Taiwan side. I tried to Google it. I couldn't find this. I'm sharing with you right now. Apparently, Joe Biden has went online to meet up with 11 world leaders, 11 of them. Now, because um, the the right the, the screenshot was from the YouTube, right, it wasn't very clear, so I double screened it in a way. But you can see that, right, Canada, EU, uh, the Europe side, France, Germany, England, uh, Romania, Japan, Italy, Poland, right? All these leaders went online to talk about this. And apparently, the main agenda is that they really want to go for it. They really want to go for it. So Biden and the White House, right, share with 11 allies and telling them, let's go for it itself, okay? This is the one, my goodness, okay? So that means someone is really very serious, okay? So the thing is this, you can see now for Washington, they are really going to give whatever they want, right? Whatever army they want, or whatever thing they want to sell, right? They really want to go for it, okay? Take a look right here, right now. All right, all the armories and all are going to be sent. And of course, you can see that, right, all the uh, volunteers, military volunteers are all preparing. Now, there is something interesting here. There's them observation that, right, some of the volunteers are all from the America side. Of course, we do know that America said they will not send soldiers, but they don't, they cannot stop volunteers, right? So very interesting now, it seems that, right, everybody is gearing for the big one. All right, so US, right, not only talk about it, they also provide money. So apparently, it's all right. US has given Ukraine 800 million. Now, wait a minute. I thought they given it for, yes, they gave it. They gave 800 million previously on the 16th of March. Now, last few days, they give another 800 million. So $1.6 billion of funds is given. I mean, but think about this itself. You give, you, you are in a, you give $1.6 billion of funds. What do you want to achieve from there? Really to help people? And the money is all right. Does it really, really reach Ukraine governments or they, in between what will happen? You know, you know, the point is this, you tell your, it's just like going to the bank, to your, your, your tell your mom, you need $20 to buy something and so, but actually the thing may cost only $13 and you may pocket in between the money. This is a feel I get. So anyway, $1.6 billion for this. Come on, man. I mean, this money can be used for better time, better uh, better thing, right? But anyway, this is what's happening right now. And you can see that now, this is a very interesting thing. America say, I will not send fighter jets, but I can give you all the spare parts. <laughs> now, my point is this. You are telling me that you don't send fighter planes over because it's like not correct, right? But you don't mind sending the spare parts. So the spare part go there. First of all, number one thing is that who's going to fly? Now, if they don't know how to fly, then how you use the planes? You understand my point itself, right? So this is kind of a question mark itself, like putting us like, you know, putting, making us like we are full of that. Of course, we all know that, right, what's happening. Everybody can see that US is involved. Very, very clear. So the thing is this. Now, the problem is this. 
All right. Putin seemingly really want to end it ASAP. But what is the biggest reason? It's because Japan, apparently Japan news came out and says that right, they did a tabulation for Putin. And do you know that how much money Putin is probably expending every day? It's as much as 100 million US dollar per day. Oh my God. So let's say Japan is really, well, Japan is one of the allies here. Yeah? So if Japan, these journalists are really correct, there's 100 million US dollar burn every single day for this fight. Now, 50 days has passed. That's how much money is that? Oh my goodness, cannot imagine, right? So this is whereby everybody is coming in. Everybody is spending money. But this thing is where the money came from the taxpayer. So in between where the money really go, right, it's a very big question mark. You understand? It's as simple that now, I, I, you tell me that you send 100 crates of uh, bullets over, but when you reach the battlefield, only that 50. Then what happened to the 50, right? Uh, yes, and things may happen, right? So to me, this WAR thingy is all right, become a very good way to you know, move money around. Don't you feel that way? So they did a calculation. They feel that right now, at the moment, Russia had lost 19,600 19, troops. They lost a lot of these uh, helicopters. They lost a lot of tanks. They lost a lot of uh, armor trucks. They lost a lot of this rocket launcher. So it seems that, right, wow, they have calculated for Russia how many things they lost. I mean, quite incredible, though. Okay, anyway, the point is this. If Russia is losing that type of amount of troops and armories and tanks and helicopters, that means that, right, he really, I mean, Putin himself maybe will need to end this ASAP. So rather than they drag for 50 days already, might as well go for it. Now, you notice that, right, you, the EU sanctioned the ruble, and the ruble plunged back then from 80, plunged all the way down to 120. But the problem is this, now look at it again, the ruble is back above the pre-invasion time. Hey, wait a minute. How can a country that's losing a billion, about losing a hundred million dollars has the, uh, the, had the money to so-called hold up the fort? So either that they have more money than we can think of, or someone is helping. So don't you even notice that now it's not only one country is involved, not two countries involved, seemingly more and more countries. And it seems like some of the bigger boys are putting bets because it, is, it doesn't make sense for the ruble to be at this price. So unless something they know, we don't know. Hmm, interesting. So that's why now Giant Global Asset Manager have put in about $82 billion into coal projects 468 billion, wow, in oil and gas. Now you understand why? So a lot of this uh, so-called ETS, fund managers, the bigger ones like Vanguard, all right, this, uh, what do you call reclaim finance, all of them are looking at to buy long-term into crude oil and also in coal projects. Now you can see right now, everybody, you have been asking me about the crude oil, right? Take a look now. Now you can see from the crude oil chart, it recently it shot up all the way on frenzy to $129 cash. Then after that, it came all the way down to about 95, okay? Low was 93, I think. Yeah, okay. Then after that, it rebounded very fast to back to 116 and so forth, okay? So now what I'm trying to say is this, okay? We are now at the very important crossroad here. Because if the market can stay above this, we are quite confident that we may be able to see 116 in the coming time. But of course, if you are wrong, then the selling may come down all the way to here, which is about 90, uh, maybe $94 plus, or it may go a bit lower, the most 90. But that is how I see it. So to me, for crude oil, right, I think it will go up. Why? Because you can see what happened first is, I mean, the workhouse have been dumping a lot of crude oil. Every time the crude oil goes a bit higher, so at 106 to 107, you can see that the crude oil got sold off, right? And it's very uh, with rhythm, yeah? So I suspect that, right, every day when the crude oil goes higher, they're actually selling their reserve. And that is not good because at the end of the day, things will have to be replaced. All right, so an EU embargo may be in the work and more slightly, it may actually happen. Now you can see now, right, somebody's a whole list of companies that's going to diversify away from Russia oil. For like example, AB, NEMAS, uh, this uh, petroleum, Swedish uh, base of oil producer say that it will stop producing feedstock from Russia. Okay, the bigger one like BP announced that it will stop buying Russian oil. Wow, okay. 
Then after that, Exxon Mobil will, will exit Russia oil and gas operation and new investment, nothing on purchase of Russian oil. And uh, UK and Germany have announced to import to end import by 2022. So basically now what I'm trying to say is this, that now a lot of them do not believe in Putin, uh, no, I'm sorry, believe in, uh, in it itself. They believe that, right, you know, this, this thing uh, by doing sanction itself will work. But the question is, look at the crude oil price. The crude oil price itself is showing that, right, it is resilient. So now I believe that crude oil price may actually trade higher in the coming months. Okay, so now that's the one reason why we are still long in Occident, uh, this Occidental Petroleum Corporation, uh, this OXY. I still believe that OXY has the ability to go up to at least $73 in the near term. And of course, anything higher is all right. We may see up to high of $90.80. Now that is for the upside. The downside itself, I tell you this, if there's going to be any stock market sell-off, this counter will not be able to be escaped. But if we come down to about $48, that will be the best, best time to buy into it itself. All right, so I'll give you the two timeline. One is just from now till then, we may see a higher price to about $73 to up to $90. But of course, in the near term, we may actually have to see equal to 48 if the selling do come in. Okay, got it. All right, so that is the crude oil side and talking about Occidental Petroleum. All right, so now go to something more important. Now, Netflix lost 35%, as we said earlier, it's all right. Okay, so now make it faster a little bit. Netflix says it's because about 100 million households share their password. Hey, that is the, what you said earlier. You allow people to share password. Uh, what's your point? <laughs> Correct or not? So now apparently they may need to do a crackdown on password already. Uh, okay. So now the thing is this, because of that, right, a lot of banks are actually downgrading this counter. So of course, they did do a collateral damage. Yes, indeed, Disney, la, Roku, la, Paramount, Warner Brothers, Discovery, all came off yesterday because of this uh, Netflix. Now, do note how Netflix lost its market share. Look at it. The market share itself at one stage was worth $300 billion. But as of yesterday, it's all right. It lost two-thirds. My goodness, two-thirds. Okay. It is a 56 billion market cap in a single day, in a way. But the main thing is this look at how we come down. Oh my goodness. So, of course, the good part is that the, this is the biggest market change. All right. So, maybe I say um, it may rebound. But of course, the question is that it may be slow. I don't think this will be fast. I may take a while. Yeah. So, Bill Eichmann, the guy who bought into Netflix recently, right now, he's taking a bidding. Okay, now, do not. Bill Eichmann came in to buy. He bought about $1.1 billion back then. Now, the thing is this, with this current uh, movement right now, right, he may lose about $400 million. And, of course, the thing is this, he wanted to buy more, in fact, but luckily he didn't, yeah? Okay, so this is Bill Eichmann. He's a billionaire American investor and hedge fund manager. Okay, okay, take a look. This is the guy. So the thing is this, his investment in Chipotle bonded and rebound and tripled in price. Okay, he last time he bet on the Chipotle and he turned $27 million to $2.6 billion, my God. So he has the power, he knows what to do, yeah? All right, the thing is this, he also had made some ill bet, like example, this one, he lost a double digit, right? Okay, now the thing is this, we all know that Bill Eichmann bought in Netflix, okay? And they say that, right, any drop will be an opportunity instead. So the question is now, the market dropped by 34%. Isn't it a good time to buy? Isn't that good? Because the time itself, when he buy, he say Netflix is an attractive valuation and much when investors see it. So he already did his homework. He had his team to help him and he felt that it's a good time to buy. But then the thing is this, now the price is lower, right? Did he buy or will he be buying? Well, let's look at the chart first. The chart shows that, right, the thing... There's a very interesting support over here itself at 203. So, Chomming, I believe that, right, in the near term, Netflix can come down to 203. That is my target. Now, for this counter itself, as you can see, it has recently been going up for the last few years. But after that, once it hit its peak recently, about $690, that was where the thing came all the way down. And, of course, when there's a gap itself and it's not filled, all right, by more than 50%, 
usually there will be more selling. All right, so this is what happened for Netflix over the course of a very long time. My main idea is this, 203 would be my level that I think it will be a supported level, yeah? 203. Okay, all right, so that is Netflix, but now we have the latest information. Oh my God, Pershing Square came in this morning today we sold our investment in Netflix that we purchased earlier this year. And because of that itself, right, we lost about 2% year to date, and that's about $400 million. Oh my goodness. All right. You can see now everywhere is talking about this. Bill Eichmann gave up Netflix, taking $400 million loss as chair tumbles. So the question is, did he not do homework? Did he not know what happened? All right. So now he says this. While Netflix business is fundamentally simple to understand, in light of the recent events, we have lost confidence in our ability to predict the company's future prospect with a sufficient degree of certainty. Oh my goodness, how can you tell me such concern, all right? You invested so much money, and now they're telling me that you can't predict, but when you invest yourself, isn't it you're predicting, or you what, you're telling me you know it for sure? So to me, this is really a very sad way to explain themselves, so rather than taking the hit. All right, but you just come out and say this. But at least they say they lost confidence and stuff like that. But, you know, this is going to be bad. So do note, right, if you notice this, right, Carl Icahn uh, and this uh, Bill Eichmann uh, got a long history back, okay? Now, apparently, uh, FYI, uh, Carl Icahn actually bought Netflix at a very, very early stage. And after that, it's uh, in 2015, he sold off. And that one itself, right, made him easily... $2 billion profit. Oh my God. So he bought a lot at the low and sold it off. Okay, he bought it at $321 million. He sold it off for $2 billion, more than $2 billion, yeah? Okay, Warren Buffer never buy Netflix. <laughs> okay, Nelson, indeed. And some people scored it, say, oh, no, remove him from the board again. Poor Warren, now again, people are removed from the board. Some people really don't understand. They have such a good guy who makes money for them and still don't see it. Anyway, why am I rubbing this in? Because I find it interesting. Now, Bill Eichmann and Carl Eichmann, right, they are, they, their brow was a long time ago already, all right? Right, to the point that they even quoted this, okay? <laughs> if you want a friend, get a dog. <laughs> so that was Bill Eichmann and Carl Eichmann back then as well, when they have a very, very most heated exchange. So if you're interested to find out what happened, bring back then, go to YouTube, key most heated exchanges, hedge fund giant Bill Eichmann and Carl Eichmann, you can actually watch it. A very interesting talk, okay? But the point is this, the point is this. The reason, one of the big reasons why is all right, because Carl Icahn was actually long in Herbalife back then. And Bill Eichmann was shorting Herbalife at that time. Wait a minute, both of them are billionaires. Both of them are a long, long time in the market. How can one long and one short? That's why I tell you this. This game is all right, even at the big boys level, it's a zero-sum game. So you can see, right, Bill Eichmann actually... At end of the day, have enough. Finally, he has done it. So the best part is this. Carl Icahn made about $1 billion profit and Bill Eichmann lost $1 billion. It's as good as someone passed to the other person. So guys, this is how it is. Even at the big boys level, it's all right. People will still lose money. So that's the reason why at end of the day, you really need to have a tool to assist you. Even though you are the richest person, you are, quite, you are rich and you are powerful, you are experienced, but still, you can lose some money. And that's the reason why I purposely talk about this today. So this is really incredible. Two giants and yet one won, one lost. Okay, interesting. All right. So, of course, were there, are they the only one to be hit? No, no. In fact, it's self, right? There's some PowerPoint issue on here. Okay. Okay. So, apparently, right, there are more people going to have hit, right, likely this more later today. Who are they? Take a look. They are Tiger Global Management. Uh, Blender. Uh, this quote here, how to pronounce it, okay? Uh, Engage, okay? Soma, Maverick. All right, all these companies, they are, these are all the hedge fund managers. They have also quite a decent size. Add together itself, right? Easily 1 billion, 2 billion, about 2 billion, $2.4 billion worth of it, my goodness. So imagine that now they saw this uh, Bill Eichmann selling first. I mean, if they were to follow through, which they might likely would do that, think about this, what will happen to the share price? That's why I say, most likely, we may even see 203. So, Chongming, are you around? So, that is my view for this because of this, all right? So, another hedge fund also, the Tiger Cups also, they also went in to buy. Oh, my God. 
So now you understand why. So, but of course, some are saying that maybe they sold already. Now we don't know. Yeah? Like I say, these are all the uh, stake they held till end of, end of 2021. Maybe they have sold it. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't have no time to check yet. Maybe they have sold, so the, the impact may not be that great. So let's see. Lah. We'll know by today. So, but then again, because of this, right, there's a collateral damage across the board. And that's why I my got reason for the let like, you understand this. Now, you must understand that now Disney, Roku, Meta, Roblox, Snap, and P Pines, right, they all got hit. I do it for you. You see that this is really a lot of effort put in for this morning MAO. Take a look now. This is Roku, right? Look, Roku shares have been down the last one whole month. The high was about 135 and now it's about 109. Not good. This is uh, Walt Disney. The high is up at 143 and now it's 124. That's already down $20 in the single month. Then we have this Meta. Now Meta did recover recently from the low of 200 to 235, but now it's back to 200 again. It's lower than the last time. So this is actually bad. And I told you Facebook to avoid. I did say to avoid Facebook, all right? Even though I'm using Facebook now, but I told you to avoid. And Roblox is all right, okay? This company was at $50, but now it's at $36. And of course, Snap, it was worth as high as 40, almost $40, and now it's at $30, lost about, again, more than 30%. And of course, last but not least, is Pine P interest. They actually lost from about $27, now it's at $21. So all these tells you that the boys are selling across the board, and all these are all the metaverse, all the social media, or the mainstream media, I mean, sorry, or the streaming uh, companies. So that's the reason why I felt that, right, if let's say Netflix were to go down further, all this company will also be hit at the same time. So now I understand why, so I'm very, uh, pretty, uh, what do you call, bearish with the current situation. Okay, well done, Chong Ming. You heard me? Thank you. All right, you can see that this is really a lot of effort putting in. Uh, yeah, watching through a lot of stuff putting a lot of screenshot here and there. This is my point here. Okay, guys, loads of effort, yep. Okay, so with all this thing, it's all right. What is happening now is ARKK, yes, up. Ah. Now, I mean, sometime I last cover them, so I will cover to them again. Now, you can see that recently when the market was recovering, up went back to $71. Now, I really keep on reminding you guys this, if you want to sell something that you're, like, I'm pretty sure of, it will be ARKK. So ARKK hit 71 again, recently created a double top, Straight away after that, the share price plunged back to $56. So which means that right, ARKK is going back down to the same level again. So I still think that there's a good chance to see ARKK going down further to maybe $50. And of course, the, company, the, the ETA that's purposely built to counter ARKK is up, of course. So you can see now this counter is up instead. <laughs> okay. All right. So if you don't want to short ARKK, you can consider a long Okay, long this guy, this the uh, total uh, capital short innovation ETF. Okay, you can try, all right. So this is the thing here, guys. Electronic gadgets and stuff like that, you also must know when, which when are, where, which side they're standing right now because all these fixed volume, yeah, for your trading. Okay, so while we are all looking at this, we have something good at least. Tesla come out pretty good stuff. Okay, Tesla revenue grows by 81%. My God, 81. Okay, very good result itself. The share up by 5%. So, of course, we have two factories newly opened in Berlin, Germany, uh, Austin, Texas. All right, and of course, um, this uh, Elon Musk was there. So, the thing is this. The main thing is that their earnings is better than expected. All is good. The only concern is their so-called battery supply. This is whereby they are worried. And they're worried that because of that, that's how they couldn't deliver. So all this information now, we all know that uh, it might bring the share price down a little bit. But based on the current now, the, because of the, uh, what do you call? The better earnings, right? So now the share price is bouncing back again to 130. So it was down by 5% yesterday. Today, the pre-market is up by 5%. So it's quite cool, right? Okay, so my point is this. If the share price goes up again, we're going to be resisted at 1030, around there. Then if it stays down instead, meaning it gets down and goes down, then we may see as low as maybe 930 reach, okay? So traders, if today you are free, do watch out for this, okay? This can be interesting. Okay, all right.
Now, of course, if let's say Tesla result is good, everybody is happy. But a company like Rivian itself, right, felt that right, he should be careful because of the chip shortage. Okay. Now, that's why Elon Musk himself, okay, wants Tesla to start its own mining lithium, right? Once the lithium is able to be done, that will save a lot of money and that will not have create any more this uh, backlog. Uh, Leon, Tesla stock split may Tesla stock split any effect. Well, the last time we saw stock split, the share price go higher. La. So I do expect when you stock split, the share will go down first initially, then after that, it will climb up. So I think that by the time that happens itself, right, it should be around also early May. Right? Yeah. All right, so you can see that, right, our Tesla itself really put itself at a very good place whereby it's almost impossible to have any chance of having a problem. Okay, with that, so you see that all the manufacturers are all around Tesla. So that's why it's a very smart move, yeah? All right, so for us, for Rivian, right, let's take a look. Remember I told you Rivian, how do we look at it? The day of IPO, right? Remember the IPO? You take the closing price of the day and leave it a line on it. So you can see that, right, if the market stays above it, the market will still go up. But once the market goes below it and there's no reply, then very high chance the market is going to go down. Okay? So that's the reason why we have this interesting IPO sharing session. I mean, just basically a simple way, draw one line and you're done. Okay? So this is what happened on the IPO day itself. Okay? For Rivian. So now the thing is this, they are seeing that the blood bump in Netflix is somehow a reminiscent of the Marlboro Friday. Now, I don't know what's a Marlboro Friday. I did check it out for you itself. So apparently, right, they are saying that right, this will really actually repeat. Lah. So Marlboro Friday is referring to 2nd of April, 1993, where Philip Morris announced a 20% price cut to their Marlboro cigarette to fight back against each uh, genetic competitor. All right, so what is happening now is this. They are saying that, right, maybe it's time for Netflix to go down their price so that more people come in. Now, I'd be upfront here, so I don't think so. I mean, I don't think it will work. All right, I don't think by lowering that anymore will make any more people come in. My first my view on this, maybe a bit more, lah, just a bit only. So anyway, from the chart itself, right? Some traders looking at it potentially if we are reverse hit and shoulder, maybe the Nasdaq is going to go up. Some people feel that right at the moment now, all is good. The NV, uh, the the what they call it, the current valuation is there, all is good. But again, I don't think so because market do not buy such stuff. They buy expectation and they sell on facts. So now at the moment, the sentiment is still pretty bullish. Most of the most of the traders now are looking to buy. All right. Although the bear is about almost the same figure. Interesting. All right. This is why it is right now. So this is the chart to show you that maybe the market is important because it happened before back in 2020. So maybe now 2022, we can you know, do something with it. So that's what it means. All right, so first of all, it's all right. This is something very interesting. Huh? Now we saw that this is the low of the S&P back on 13th of March, okay? That was a day, all right? Now take a note here, it's all everybody, see that? So you can see that when the market was down, where a lot of people are actually feeling the pinch, they think the market is gonna go down, they are more to the neutral. So whenever, whenever this uh, people are neutral and they are actually, uh, bearish, right? That will be the potential time the market may recover. So you think back again, you, do you see the pattern happening whereby the ones, uh, you know, the, um, getting bad, the, if the numbers are all one side itself, right? Usually the opposite will happen. So the thing is this right now, apparently why the market is moving up because of this, okay? There's no latest one at the moment. So if that's the case, that means that whenever people are very pessimistic, right, it might be a good time to look at the market. Yeah. All right, so some important alternate market news for all of us today. Let's take a look. Now, this one, I'll go very slowly. It may help you if you're doing for long-term positioning, but listen to me throughout first, then make your decision, yeah? Okay. Now, this is the effective fund rate. At the moment now, it's 0.25%. Okay, this one we all know already. Nothing special to talk about it. Okay, fair enough. All right, now take a look now. Interesting. Okay, if you put the federal fund rate together with the SPX, 
you will notice a very interesting phenomenon is that when the Fed fund rates goes higher, the, the what do you call the, the CPI itself, right, actually also goes higher. So when the this one again in 08, whereby they actually push and more sugar, right? Then that was where I also, you know, see that the market also goes up. That means that, right, even though when the effective fund rates are moving up, it's all right, the history has proven that whenever that happened, the stock market will still go up. But the thing is this, as I said, okay, this is basically, we have to speculate because there's no 100%. I checked back, I, I checked through, they didn't really say. So now the thing is this, if that is the case, if the this uh, index start to go higher, does it mean that right, the stock market will go even higher? Mm, that is where, this is where the, the thing must start to think really. The previous pattern, it seems to be like that, but this year, right, it's very unique. So that's the reason why I feel that, right, maybe I just share with you all, and hopefully I'll give you some uh, views on the site, yeah? Okay. All right, so now the thing is this, a lot of people now are looking at a potential 75 to 100 basis point by the May itself, right? Now the thing is this, most people looking at 25, 50, they're looking much higher. Okay, so that's gonna be interesting. And of course, the next, uh, when it comes survey, that was asking all the more veteran traders, right? They are saying that, right, actually only 50% as compared to 90%. So, but that is in May, uh, July, July meetup. Okay, July is meetup. So, with all these things as well, and what we see over here, it seems that, right, having a fund rate moving higher does seem to propel the stock market higher. This is very interesting, yeah? So, you can see also at the same time now, the SPX bull is very low at 15.8. The thing is this, usually it's all right, even that the worst time itself is about only like, you know, 12 or 13, but this time around is at almost at 18. So what does it tell me? That means that logically speaking, that there'll be a lot of buying in the market, right? Soon. So, well, two ways. One, the stock market come down so fast, it hit everybody, then the boys come in and buy. Two, basically it's all right. They can consider the stop loss because there's no no no, no either here and stuff. So there's a lot of way to interpret the chart. It's all depending whether you are bullish or bearish. So based on that, right, since about 75% of people are looking at the six to seven, eight jabs, right? But most likely the number will be five. So if that thing comes itself, right, if six to eight people really all come, then of course, uh, maybe by the end of the day, maybe uh, five. So from here itself, you can see that, right, that it's actually a number people are actually looking at the S&P 500 to break the all time high. So, okay, all right. So you can see the government bond yield now is the thing now. We can see if the bond yield now really, because of it's like over, over stretch and stuff like that, and if you want to go down, then please bring, uh, then you must go with it, yeah? All right, now of course, if this is going to be just only one time and the market can shake off from here itself, right? That will be the, the thing to watch out. If it happens, right, the bond yield will shoot out, the bond price goes down and the money will be taken away for the cash market back to the bond market. All right, so this is a bond yield right now. All right, so they're looking at the bond yield to stop there, meaning the bond prices go higher, yeah. Okay, all right, so that is the bond yield and stuff like that. Okay, so with that is all right, guys, I'm saying this, if let's say, or what I just said earlier, if let's say from the chart now, you can see very clearly that the yield has been uh, very consistent with the trend line. So if the yields pull back, the bond price slightly is increasing. And if that is happening, it's all right. That means more and more people, all right, will be, uh, you know, have to make their own decision to see which, which side they want to go. So if the yield actually continue to go higher, that means the bond price will go lower then of course, no one will be buying the bonds. So we need to have a flaw somewhere, okay? All right, so of course, the, you can see that in terms of the movement itself is not updated yet. Huh? Okay, guys, so got it. So that is the all for today's sharing in terms of all the fundamentals. So I believe that, right, there could be a chance that Russia may really go for it just to settle this one and four because they may not have the money to continue too long. Number two itself, right, I believe that the 
uh, US market that might be going into profit taking soon because the bond price is all right. Most looks very, very good for buying. And of course, there's some money to make out of it. All right, so I believe that this might be happening. Okay. All right, so that will be all for the front part. The bull goes moo, the bear goes grr, and the lemming goat is different this time. Okay. Let's look at the charts and prepare for our trading day today. Now, just now, I was jumping with joy because we have our Hong Kong. Yay! Now, earlier in saw right, what we had was that we saw the uh, we have a sell signal here. Right here is a sell signal because the market was below OP. Sorry, OP is here. Below OP, opening price, and below the pivot two. And CCYR is a sell. All right, we've got a dog, it's a sell. And the market really, really came down. You can see the market really coming down and now at the low of the day. Excellent. So for those who actually profited together with us, congratulations with you, uh, to you. Uh. Now, why are we looking at this number, 20,632, right? Because that is a BNB uh, level, right? 20,632 is a BNB number. So the thing is this, the market did trigger the BNB by two, one, two, three, four, five, six around six days to reach, but of course it was minus three days for all the, the day itself, all right? And then of course, plus and minus, you know? So my point is this, the market still reached the BNB level as what we have mentioned and really triggered. So those who have shorted with us, congratulations to you uh, once again. Now let's look at China. Now is China bad? Yes, it's bad. That's the reason why, you see, I'm very, very, clear of what I share. I say that if the market cannot stay above 13,866, I will tell you most likely you see 13,243. So what happened is this, the guy, no, the thing is this, the market broke below the moving average. I say already, the market will go down lower and now it's now trading lower and we are very near to this point. Okay, so if you guys can come back all right, to tell what do we look at here itself, this will be the first support, 13,243. This will be the first support for the China A50. And I think that if that happened, Hong Kong may be pressured down further, yeah? Okay, so let's look at the US market to begin with for today, the Dow Jones. Okay, the Dow Jones itself already triggered the BNB, so I don't think there's any more angle to go. My nearest KCB is quite far away, it's somewhere near here at 35,877. Uh, okay, so it's not going for that. So now the thing is this, the Dow also break the BNB and within two days only, the market has given profit. Congratulations, yeah. Okay, so now the question is what to do next. Now we do have a little bit growth here. You can see that, okay. And of course it's above MA30, and 200 everything is okay. So all is good. Now the KSI is also red, uh, green, uh, green and it's uptick. So that means everything looks good. So basically to buy will make more sense. But the thing is this, uh, the, the thing is that, uh, would it be correct? No, well, it's absolutely correct. If the market stay up, the sell rate can go all the way to 35,705. So let me show you the intraday of this at the moment right now. There's nothing much here itself. Still pretty sideways, yeah? Okay, so just wait for a while. Now, NASDAQ is a doji directional day. So you can see that even though the Dow is not, but the NASDAQ is the doji directional day. So that means that today there should be one straightforward answer. Either the market will go all the way up to MA30 or go down all the way to here, that is the level that I suspect when you're going. Okay, so the first one will be one, four, seven, point one eight, yeah? Okay, the downside is all right, where can it be? Well, the downside can be here, which is about 13,879. Okay, all right. All right, so NASDAQ support itself uh, around here, around this area here, 13.8. Okay, 
Okay, a minute. I think there's something else error here. Hold on. Uh, 13 is 79, correct. That's a, that's a low here, it's 79. It's the low here. There is a SL point. Now, if the NASDAQ now is trading below P2, yeah? Take note, huh? the NASDAQ is below P2. So if the market loses MLP, the MLP is 14,083. If the market loses below the MLP, we may see the market coming down to 13,879. The KSI is red in color and it's uptick, yeah? It's red in color and uptick. So NASDAQ, be careful, but now it's still over OP, still not so bad. But once it go below OP, right, that means the P2 impact will kick in, yeah? The P2 impact will kick in. S&P 500 also moving upwards. Now the MA, MA 200 is against it, but MA 230, MLP is supporting it. KSI is also green. So it may not be that easy, but the thing is if it goes higher, the target itself will be 4506. Okay, but if it goes lower, hmm, then we may have to go down all the way below 44, 34 level. I don't think so. It's already even already. Yeah, so we will see how it goes. Okay, so now let's just, Hang Seng has been done. Nikkei. Now, Nikkei today continue to trade higher. Now, today is DJ, DD. KSI is green in color. So, if the market stays above OP, it's a long. And it go above MA30, it's a long, right? And it's all the way up right now. Let's look at it intraday uh, to see the power of this. Wow, look at it, right? The market is a DJ, DD. So, today, as long as the market stays above OP, CCRY is a buy. You just buy all the way. And you want to add again, you add position here. There's another CCRY, and of course, the share the market Nikkei went all the way up and misses shy the pivot just by a fraction only. But that is a beautiful run here, as well, right? And all you do is just follow and trade, right? Very uh, boring in a way, but that's how you make your money, yeah? Okay, so that is Nikkei. Okay, yeah. DEX. Now DEX is also moving higher yesterday due to the movement. So DEX today may test the BMB, right? The BMB is 14,493. So now we are still about 100 plus point away. Let's see how it goes. All right, if it's coming up, so 14,493 will be the target level, yeah? Okay, downside itself, you have to basically get some support here. 1461 is a very strong support. If we break it, then we see. Okay, watch out for this. Okay, crude oil. I told you right, in my opinion, it's all right. Crude oil might be going up soon. Now, crude oil is also a DJ DD. So that means that crude oil could be a directional day today. Now, the direction day is really clear. If it's an upside target, right, with the MA all supporting you in a way, all right, you can aim all the way here to 109. Okay, 109.76. Now, the thing is this, now we are only at 102 to 103. So to move up to 109, you need about $6 move. Whether what, Why would it be doing that? We won't know, but it's just a possibility, yeah? All right, next one, market itself, we're looking at gold. Now, gold today, let's take a look. Mm, okay, gold today, the KSI maintained green in color and incredibly, it's still uptick. So what we are going to look at is, so, right, if the market stays above the OP, it should be fine. But instead, the market stays below OP, all right, and um, the MAs are all very nearby. Okay, let me just share with you. If the market stays up above MLP and 1953, most likely it will go back up again. And of course, the next step will be here. Yep. Okay. So what target will that be then? Roughly, it's all right. This is actually the uh, 1977. Okay. 
Okay, current price is 1952. Okay, so as silver, silver is not doing that well, yeah. Silver is kind of down, it's down below MLP, it's down below MA30. So it may have to come down here, and that's 2471. Okay, so if silver is be down, 24 $24.71 might be the one that will be down towards here. So, so traders be very, very careful on this. Okay. All right, so that is gold and silver. The last two is this uh, uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. Now, Ethereum is also a DJDD today. Oh my God. Okay, so another bigger movement is coming in. So if the market stays up, it's all right. It will likely be going to 3212 because that is the place I like. All right, it may be going there. Now, the downside is all right. The market loses MLP at 3088. Then you come back down and we see how. All right, the thing is this, Ethereum can go down to 28,000, 28,004, 28,004, that will be the um, BNB minus one time one for the uh, Ethereum, All right? So now the upside itself is 3212, 32, the downside is 28,004, uh, 28, yeah? But the KSI is green and the blue bar are retracing, so very good chance the this particular target 3212 most likely will happen. Okay. All right. Last but not least, the final one. Yay. The final one will be Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is also a DJDD today and it's moving up already. The KSI is green. The blue bars are retracing a little bit. So, very, very good chance that we will see a further upside for this market. Yeah. Okay. Further upside. So upside itself should be 42, 33, 2, because it's an MA30. A little bit more, we can get about 42, 68, 6. All right, that is the uh, pure one. Okay. All right. So the thing is this for Bitcoin, there's some saying that, right, whenever there's a not so good thing happening, maybe a wall or something bad itself, Bitcoin will be in the buy side. If Bitcoin is in the buy side, it's all right, the equity market may fall. So that's one saying here. So let's see whether it makes sense or not. All right, so to wrap it up, guys, just a quick, quick one before we go. All right, the thing is this, I'm kind of bullish with crude oil, but I know that Joe Biden and team is trying to push the price down. Anytime you can see it's about OP today, it will be a buy because of the doji directional day. Now for the Dow Jones is all right, it has already completed the BNB extension one time one. And of course, the current situation, maybe there could be some profit taking. All right, so that will be all for today. Thank you very much once again, guys. Thank you for waiting for